Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Macklin's Ravens going up against Green's Bengals. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, we are in the place the folks here call the jungle, and that's Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. And we say hi again, everybody. Brandon Gauden here as we count down to kickoff. I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, Larry pointed out in the open, we've got a pretty good matchup of wide receivers here this afternoon, don't we? And those guys have such a big impact on the game nowadays. We know it's a throwing game, but the guys who can go up and get it, the guys who can break tackles after the catch and make bigger plays, Oh, yeah, they love spotlight as well. They want the football. They want the attention. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And we are underway from Cincinnati. On the return, it's Alex Erickson. Yeah, he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. Their seventh-year quarterback from TCU bringing him onto the field. That's the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton. And remember, he was a day one starter his rookie year, and that was the year of the lockout. So he didn't even get the OTAs and minicamp that led into it, led his team to the playoffs that year, led his team to the playoffs his first five years in the league before a 6-9-1 record in 2016. carry now this is Hill a beautiful spin and room to run and he'll be out of bounds across the 30 yard line it'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out and by a few inches that'll be a first down that O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Again, they run with Hill. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And a look now at the Cincinnati offense. When you're right on the verge of being a top 10 overall offense in the NFL, you would think that things are pretty good for your team. But the Bengals want to improve. They were 13th in rushing. And for a team that wants to run the football first, last, and always, that's an area that they're trying to jump up in 2017. So the offense looking at a second and eight. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Dalton to Green for a Cincinnati first. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man, maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. So here we go, first and ten now. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Brandon LaFell, his intended target, and now it's second down. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. When talking about the Ravens' defense, it's pretty easy to take them for granted, isn't it? The traditionally a top-ten defense, but if you take a closer look at the numbers in 2016, 
that might surprise you about how good they were during the season. Fifth against the run, ninth against the pass, seventh overall. Once again, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the better defenses in the NFL. The play fake to Hill, Dalton. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. And it's third down. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. This will be Dalton again. And that's caught at the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. And Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, get stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. And the offense lining up first and ten. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. The penalty on first down backs him up five. It's now first down at 15. Following the penalty, it's Hill. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Dalton to Hill on the draw. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. Now they're coming up on play number eight of this opening drive, but they're looking at a third and long. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. So on fourth down, Marvin Lewis sends on the field goal unit. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Bullock will put this one through. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 nothing. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that when their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today.
After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes quarterback Joe Flacco for the Baltimore Ravens. Likely going to miss the entire preseason with a bulky back. We're just hoping to have him ready for the game's account. It seems to be vital for them. Ryan Mallett has been quarterbacking the team in the preseason, and they actually won their first preseason game. And head coach John Harbaugh said he gave a winning effort. But all in all, if they expect to get back to the playoffs, they'll need Joe Flacco back when the season begins. Terrence West and he's got some space here and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory that one 28 yards on the ground and that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons the ability to really hit on a big run last year their longest run was just 41 yards all season four yards per carry near the bottom of the league West again. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. And here now the Baltimore offense. This organization's identity for years has been its defense, but if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016, better than you might think. 17th overall, 12th in passing. They're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the NFL. Play action, Flacco. And this one is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Brett Perriman there. Third down here. The defensive starters now for Cincinnati. The Cincinnati defense is well respected around the league, but they didn't play to their standard in 2016. If you just look at the pure numbers, ended up 17th overall in total defense. But in the tough division that they're in, the AFC North, they have to be better against the run. They ranked just 21st in 2016. That's got to change for them to make the improvement they want in 2017. And a line to gain here is the 37 on third down. First carry for the bat, Danny Woodhead. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Inside the 25 now at the 24. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Flacco here on second down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. 
Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys, let's keep it going. Push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup, so a good situation on second and two. It's now third and one. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. To pass, Flacco. That's caught the two and he won't have the touchdown but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two just a yard but that's all they needed and by the slimmest of margins it'll be first and goal that throw is not going to get them a whole lot but that really didn't matter did it they got what they needed on that throw picked up the first down and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. That's what they were aiming for. You want to keep moving the sticks, get into a rhythm, gain confidence as you go along. And right now, mission accomplished. Touchdown, Jeremy Macklin, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A 10-play drive that time, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Yeah. 
They go play action here on first down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. scrimmage and taken down no gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten and as a defensive end getting off the ball quickly swarming to the football making a tackle that's what we saw right there yeah and that's what their job is and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance they're just headed straight for the quarterback that was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain to throw here Dalton he's going to air one out and he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked down inside the five-yard line. Ravens offense running onto the field and speaking of the Ravens they did something pretty cool on Monday after their victory over the Dolphins in the second week of the preseason took the day off from practices and meetings and instead headed south on I-95 took a tour of the Pentagon and later Charles went to lay a wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier that's really cool you know that starts with the ownership you know the head coach John Harbaugh helping execute that they also had a couple players on the team who were able to really participate Keenan Reynolds graduate of the United States Naval Academy Academy, Otha Foster, a former Marine. They both participate in these ceremonies as well. They start on the ground with West. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Partner, I think a lot of people thought that Baltimore would draft at least one runner. In fact, they didn't take any skill position players in the draft. So I think a lot's still going to fall on Terrence West. Well, he did have over 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year, a career high. So it'll be first down here after the run. that snap off Flacco now got a man over the middle it's Williams and they'll bring him down at the 27 yard line seven yards the pick up on the pitch and catch I think defensively you're okay with that you're in the first quarter he's going to get some catches but they rallied to him quickly and that's what you count on and I like what you just said first quarter can you do it all game long they catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. Defense has to stand tall here, third and one. Back, 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 back. 
And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. On third and one, it seems natural to just turn and hand it to the biggest guy you have in the backfield. But usually, he's not the primary runner. So for the defense, they're often keying on the running back because he's the guy who gets the ball more often, and the fullback is the blocker. When he ends up carrying the football, that's a heck of a tendency breaker. And now you're just trying to jump on his back and hold on. And we will not see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. 7-3 the score. We'll return to Cincinnati after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Second quarter now. Brandon God and Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football, and they've got it here with a first down. short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. This is West. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. On the ground, this is Woodhead. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Geno Atkins coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. Second down, Flacco to throw. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take it down to the 40. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. All right, say it with me now. There's a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty? Yep. Wiley? Oh, definitely. All the veteran names? You name it, has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. 
Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright, and this score will stay right where it is. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, set this one off target. The Bengals getting set to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't come before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. They start the drive on the ground with Hill. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. this across midfield not by much they'll mark it down at the 49 just a couple on the pick up there and now it's third down I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game you're now doing the dictating on defense and guess what now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time but you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt third down a shot here for Dalton and almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Now here's Danny Woodhead, he and the offense gearing up to take the field. A good job in the passing game, decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. The drive begins with a handoff to West. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. It's really come into vogue to talk about the, the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? Well, where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double-A gap blitz, that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. 
In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. They run with Woodhead. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be third down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. The Ravens on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and nine. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. He'll drop it underneath for Woodhead. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep for the Bengals, Adam Jones. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They begin the drive with Hill. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audible there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Again, it's Hill. <laughs> and they're able to get this one across the 35. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long. That he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. You think about the great tandems that we've had this decade in the NFL. Think about Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Brady, and Gronk. But look, Andy Dalton and A.J. Green, they have to rank in there, don't they? Yeah, and two guys that came from the same draft class. A.J. Green in the first round, Andy Dalton in the second round. And what they've meant to the Cincinnati Bengals franchise has been everything. A lot of playoff appearances. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. On 
first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. And his throw here is incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Defensively, as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. And the Bengals on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. And hear the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That they occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation allows him to get home. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. They begin here with a run by West. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25 yard line. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. Play fake here on first down. Under pressure, and Flacco's going to be dropped. Carl Lawson in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Cincinnati after this. A reminder coming up at halftime. Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that.
Here's West. They had a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and a mile. Here's Woodhead. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Sam Cook now, standing just outside his own goal line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Jones on the return. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bengals take possession. And out now, here come the Bengals. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? Well, we're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. and 10 for Dalton. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. It's second down. Dalton looking. Green with a catch left side. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And the Bengals on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and 14. Dalton gives to Bernard. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. And now the Ravens are going to take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime.
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Campanero on the return. Oh, and now he bowls him over. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Watson. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. and 10 with Flacco and that is incomplete 16 seconds now on the clock Ben Watson was the intended target the tight end that'll bring up second down Flacco to throw again on second down Catch made there by Brett Perriman. He showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Beagles right now have a time of possession advantage, but it has not led them to taking control of this game. The Ravens look like they'll be in this game for four quarters. Here we go, let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. We go now late in the first. Flacco's on point with the throw, and he cap off the 10-play drive with a TD. They're now on top by four. First and 10, Lawson's able to zero in on the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Flacco's going to complete the pass, and he ends up at the 49-yard line before he stopped on the play.
So that's it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We'll go back now to Cincinnati for the start of the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. West. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a handoff here to his running back. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Oftentimes when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards. But after a play like that, he may tell him, Instead of getting the steaks, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. They hits his target. Left side, Watson. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Play action. Flacco. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Michael Johnson in there to bury him for a loss of 11. 
Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. adjustments it appears at least on this drive the Ravens on third down they've hit it 50 percent three of six to this point this will be third and forever they'll run it now out of the gun call it no gain there and it leads to a fourth down one of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. This is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. The first down throw coming for Dalton. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Dalton with a give to Hill. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And the Bengals on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and eight. Dalton up play action. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Oh, I can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Great coverage there, holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. 
the Ravens offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game, but why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Going to give this time to the tailback. He finds an opening past the 40. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That burst good for 20 and a first down. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side, but how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle, or if you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage, you've got a chance to rumble. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. Airing one out from Macklin, deep downfield. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on at its second down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. take this up just shy of midfield only a yard of the pickup there so it leaves them needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine well that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes but they've been moving it well all game on the ground this is another one that keeps them moving forward the Ravens on third down three for seven so far in this game this is third and nine They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Try to get the offense going with Hill. And he'll lose yardage here back to the 15. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Boy, you go three and out on your first drive, and that's not the way you want to start this drive either. Doesn't seem like they're really into it just yet. No, first four plays, you don't want to call it a disaster, but not looking very sharp. Keep it on the ground. Hill, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. 
Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it's the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. On third down, Dalton. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. A well, third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now a handoff here to his running back. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and five. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. Now a first down carry. It's Hill. And he'll be brought down here at the 28.
The play fake to Hill. Dalton. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. A very solid gain of 27. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I good. mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? So the offense has it first and 10. Andy Dalton. Green's got it over the middle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. First down, Hill. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. They'll keep it on the ground. Hill, and he'll get it down this time to the 17. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. A little eager there coming in from his outside linebacker position. You think the hard count got him there? Yeah. Maybe that extra hut, you know, <laughs> that, that extra emphasis on it, got him to jump, and they picked up five yards. So first down, five yards to go. They go play action here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Tyus Bowser not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. And here comes play number six on this drive. Carry for Bernard. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves him still needing 11 here on third down. Now the Bengals on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. This is third and 11. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Brandon LaFell 
An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now they try the right side here. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now Flacco. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Jeremy Macklin, the intended receiver, and it's third and five. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. He couldn't contort his body back to grab it. The Ravens on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This will be third and five. Flacco from the gun. And that's complete. It's Watson. Now he will have a first down here at about the 40. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
Now a handoff looking right. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. The Ravens on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and 16. From the gun, Flacco. That is caught. It's Perriman. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A big gain of 31 on third down. First and ten here for Flacco. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Carlos Dunlap in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. And he'll give it here to his running back. Good move on the carry, but still brought down just inside the 40. That'll get a little bit back, give him five on the run, and they'll be left with a third and 13. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. They may be snapping a ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. So here comes Justin Tucker in a big spot. This to break our fourth quarter time. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And, Charles, you talk about a big kick under pressure in the fourth quarter. That wasn't like a 33-yarder. That was a long-distance kick. Brandon, it shows you the faith that this coaching staff has in their kicker. You're right. If this goes wrong, you're going to give up the ball near midfield. But that was an absolute rainmaker, and it's going to give them a late lead. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit, 
Ball pops out, incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. To throw again, Dalton. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. C.J. Mosley in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to do, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Here's Kevin Huber now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now Campanero. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Now a handoff here to his running back. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. To pass, Flacco. On the screen, this is Woodhead. Give him eight yards on the play, and they pick up the first. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. Fresh set of downs here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. 
Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Flacco here on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. Now it's Woodhead. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now it's Flacco. That's caught out left by Perriman. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. And now a first down following that long gain. Now they'll run on the draw. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Flacco. And that is incomplete. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. It's lining up first and ten. Dalton here from the gun. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. That throw good for four. It's second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And a right side completion here by LaFell. And he's gonna get this inside the 30. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. This will be Dalton again. He finds Ross right side, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. They took their shot for the end zone, almost cost him. And he made the right play there, knocking it away. But boy, it looked like he had a chance to come down with the football. And if he does that, this thing is over. Instead, he leaves them out there with another chance. And the Bengals on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This time they face a third and 2. They'll try and run for it. Here's Hill. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Back to throw. And all the way down inside the 5 to the 4. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. Now he's got it. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. 
He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Dalton saying, let's get going here, guys, as he rallies him to get set. He'll look to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Now whistles at a flag, and I believe a bangle got going a little early there. The offense on third down, they've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. They're looking at a third and goal here. And here is motion again, and that's going to be two in a row. Bengals on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and goal. They'll look to throw. On the screen, Bernard. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Ten yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. Dalton saying, let's get going here, guys, as he rallies him to get set. Big fourth down here. It's Dalton. And that is incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They have the lead. Still a one-possession game, but the defense got the stop. They've got the football now. Just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now starting to take their tape off. And, hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away, and that means ball security. Absolutely. Stranger things have happened. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second down following the run. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Sam Cook now. And you wonder, could they possibly think about taking a safety here? He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bengals take possession. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring and how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Well, we saw a close game that kept us on the edge of our seats down to that final whistle. And right before that final whistle, defense with one last exclamation mark there getting the sack to end it. I love how you phrased it because we were waiting to see what would happen. Obviously, we thought something would happen downfield. Instead, it happens in the offensive backfield, and that's your ball game. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.